and um, it gives me great pleasure, but I'm not going to talk to you about that. I'm here today to introduce you to the best pinball designer in the world, king of pinball designers. Can I just ask, I'm not going to use his name, how many of you own or have owned a Steve Ritchie game? <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you what he's done, you know that. So without any more ado, can I introduce my good friend Steve Ritchie? Thank you very much. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but Martin's going to fix it. Martin's a brilliant man. I noticed that these people from England, they have great vocabulary and the ability to deal with electronics. <laughs> anyway, uh, first of all, I would like to say it's great to be in Texas again. Lots of pinball friends here. The title of my, the theme of my speech is it's good to be king. It is good to be king. It's, I have friends all over the world. It's fun. I have a great job. I love it. I do, I do what I want to do every day. It doesn't mean it's always wonderful, but most of the time it's, it's a great job. And uh, I am grateful to have people that appreciate my game. It's worth more to me um, than the money I get paid. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do a little slideshow. I usually do a slideshow or two, but first I have this little story, okay? I'm thinking of a, a Catholic guy that hasn't been to church in a long time. Let's call him Jack. <laughs> he, goes, he goes to confession, okay? He's walking in the church, he hasn't been to confession in three or four years, okay? He walks up quietly to the confessional, opens the door and sits down, and as his eyes become accustomed to the dark light, he sees that there's the best vegetable wine here on the wall, bottles of it, chocolates, cigars, and a very nice display of ladies who forgot to put their clothes on. Where's this place? <laughs> <laughs> he hears a noise at the other door, and he says, Father, I haven't been to church in a long time. My, how things have changed. And he hears, get out, idiot, you're on my side. <laughs> <laughs> That's silly. Okay, uh, normally what I do is I cut my hair. I always cut my own hair, which is stupid. People, you know, people ridicule me about it at work. They go, your hair looks off the wall. Hey, I'm happy to have hair at 63. I'm glad to have it. I use this thing called the Floby. You know, you connect it up to your back. <laughs> <and you're laughs> exactly the same length when you're done, okay? It makes you look like a tennis ball. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't care. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if we have the first picture here, but... Oh, yes, this is the first picture. Um, I'm not a very good photographer, so it amazes me when I get something like that. But in California, it's pretty easy to take a picture like that pretty much any night. Um, it, this was taken at the ranch, uh, Matt Cristiano's ranch, where he has 100 pinball machines, and uh, he's like a great supporter of pinball. And we actually lived on the ranch for about eight months. It was great. Um, this is a pinhead. This is, this is Mario. He's a pinball collector, and she's angry about it. <laughs> uh, she's happy. Her name is Patricia. Just dear friends of mine. And I have to say, I have another dear friend today here. I have lots of them here, but... This one is the dearest. This is my wife, Diana. And, uh, I couldn't do my job without her. Okay, this is Jody Danker. And uh, he's like the head of marketing at, at Stern. He's wearing a very ugly sweatshirt. I don't like that thing. <laughs> That's scary. This is my granddaughter. We're taking up a collection for some plastic surgery out there <laughs> right here. Actually, it's beautiful. And these are two guys, you know, uh, I, this was from Norway. I, I went to go, I went to a pinball show in, uh, just outside of Oslo. And, uh, you know, the pinball guys are just like everywhere else in the world. They love it. Look at this, what I did, the reproduction there. I mean, um, sorry, a rehab. Uh, they have amazing pinball machines. There was probably about a hundred people there. And uh, 
I, I can't get over those words right there. Cool factor start scanning. It's not cool. It's not cool. Anyway, these two guys are father and son, and they collect pinballs. And I think they have an operation also near Oslo. In Norway, people just leave their pinballs on the street. You can drive by, pick one up, throw it on your truck. It's yours. <laughs> and this is this man, very, very drunk. These are even worse. These guys are drunk and rowdy. Um, this is an interesting character. Um, he does almost all of our sculptures. He's, uh, I showed this picture last year, but nobody could see what it is. But that is the AC, DC train in his hand. And uh, he does a great job. Also, he drives around in this thing around Halloween. And uh, an awesome dude. And this is my good friend, Gary Flower. And here he's holding one of these weird medieval spiky things that they have in England everywhere. Um, it's like a chain with big spikes in it. And I don't know if you've ever been to London, but they have this medieval museum, and it's, it's very scary. I'm glad they're out of that era. <laughs> uh, this is my brother and I. My brother is a pinball maker, too. He hasn't made them in a while. He's working at, uh, actually, for Roth Thrills and Play Mechanics as a game producer. We both have... Uh, Suzuki V-Strom 650s, and it's like, it's a little bike, but it goes fast, it's fun, and uh, I have to admit, though, it's not much fun to ride in Illinois, because everything's pretty much flat and straight, and not much geography. Uh, this is, uh, like, the tallest point in Illinois. It got to be the tallest point in Illinois by digging a big hole. Nature did it, so it's really at zero elevation, but there's a big hole. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is like uh, ACDC, this is uh, Alejandra and Lahore, maybe? Anyway, um, we have been building ACDC for 15 months, which is uh, a very long time. We build some every month, and uh, we're very proud of it. This is uh, another shot of the line. This was taken two days ago, so they're on the line right now. Um, these guys are the testers, and speaking of testing, we are on a, uh, a, a new quest for better quality. Um, we know we haven't always delivered an ace game, you know, something you can pull out of the box. I'm not one for hiding behind anything like that, but we're trying to improve it, and we're trying to, you know, beat on our vendors to get better stuff to us, and, and uh, correct the first time, and, and our, you know, improve our workmanship everywhere we can. One important thing, if you think about it, is we get play fields at one end of the factory, okay? And if they're, if they're already broken or messed up or scratched, you know, we don't want to put any parts on those play fields. We just don't want to because once they have parts on them, it becomes very difficult and expensive, you know, and sometimes they don't get caught till the very end. So if we can catch them in the beginning, we do, and uh, we're working on a lot of things you know, like that. Also, testing devices on right at the site where they are uh, manufactured. And I think George was kind of alluding to, you know, uh, what a real pinball factory looks like. It isn't very neat, that's a fact, but right across from where a person has to put a device on, it is built right there. So the people that are building the device, when, when, when the person putting it on finds something wrong, he can return it and say, hey, this isn't right and they will fix it on the spot. It's a very good way to do things instead of assuming that all parts and assemblies that you receive are great. They may not be. We do the same thing with harnesses. Before we zip tie them, we test all the harnesses while they're on those big plywood harness boards to make sure they operate correctly. Um, I'm not sure why this is here. I guess because I was stunned by the beauty. Wisconsin is an awesome state. And, uh, I went up to shoot guns with my brother and some friends, and this is their cabin. Phenomenal place. I know it's crazy. I hate to bring up guns. You people in Texas understand guns. <laughs> That's a shooting stand we made ourselves. It really wasn't my design or anything. It was basically a friend of mine named Chris Lover, and uh, he supplied the materials. And we all got together and built that shooting stand. It's really uh, a nice thing. They bring it out with a tractor. We pull it up against the slopey hill and we can shoot safely without killing anybody. It's a wonderful thing. 
Um, this is my brother again. This is the guy who runs the place, Chris Lover. And this is my friend with his AK. It was very interesting to shoot this gun, I'll tell you. Uh, kind of a fight, actually. Again, I don't, I don't even know why they're here, but I just want you to know that I guess this is part of my life, too. I'm not obsessed by it. I mean, I had fun shooting, but I, you know, I, I could live without it for a good couple days. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, you know, twice a year, maybe. That's what I do, just to stay in. Uh, you know, the older you get, though, you know, the more shaky you get. Rifles are better for me. I like rifles that are glued in, you know, kind of stuck there. Can't miss. Um, again, my brother, he just got a new Beretta, a 9mm, it's a nice gun. Uh, this is inside of the cabin. Like I said, I don't know why I bought these, but I do a slideshow every year, and this is part of my life. It's an interesting place, and uh, I, guess, I guess it's a reflection of me. Uh, in Illinois, it's, like I said, flat, no geography. In Wisconsin, it's different, it's very nice. Okay, this is, this is a shot of Lyman Sheets. Lyman Sheets is a... Uh, uh, you know, he's the best program alive right now when it comes to pinball machines. And I'm really happy to say that he's on our next game also. And, uh, and we, we have a great time making the games. Wyman doesn't come up with all the rules, but he always comes up with the best ones. That's a fact. For people who don't understand or you know, Wyman can tell me, why don't we do this on the play field? I can tell him, we can do the rules. The things that we do are pretty much uh, shared in all respects. If I have something wrong on my play field, he's gonna call it. If I think that Wyman is a great player and sometimes maybe the perspective is from a great player as far as rules go or getting into the game, you know, he, he can't even concede losing a ball within 30 seconds. It just doesn't happen to him often. And, um, and so that's where I butt in and I say, you know, come on, I'm a lousy player, but I want to have fun. I want other people to have fun too. So we, we try to get this, you know, this system going where it's, we call it the front end. The first part of the rules that you play. And, uh, you know, beyond that, beyond where I can't get to, that's Lyman's territory 100% because he knows how to make it uh, play well, he knows how to balance rules, he knows how to give people scores. We get together on effects and, uh, um, and lighting and, uh, of course, sound and, and humor, too. He, often he, he wrote a lot of the scripts for uh, my character. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's always great to work with a pinball man. This is a pinball man. Aren't many left. Um, Ah, boxes. I'm still thrilled we're making them. Uh, oh. yeah. I, we, we, uh, we, these are all premiums, which is interesting. It's, it, this, this has worked out for Stern very well. There's a lot of people who don't, don't want to spend the money for an LE, and, and uh, frankly, I don't think we made enough ACDC LEs, but um, the premium at least delivers all the game that you would get in an, LT, uh, an LE. Sorry. Um, this guy's an excellent tester, and he's like, he finds electronic problems that other people don't. And um, the people on the line, especially final tests, are uh, amazing. It's another one, this is Gilbert. And these, these people are running, this is a mix right here. Uh, this lady's working on an ACDC premium. Uh, beyond that, I think is an Avenger. No, that might be an Avatar, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, the parts are all there for either game, and they, they pick the right parts to put on the game at that station. And this is a line of ACDC cabinets. This lady is like, she is excellent. She, this box right in front of her on the play field, which has foam so it doesn't scratch anything, is loaded with all the little parts she adds to the game. And, uh, ladies are much better at handling precise objects you know, uh, their hands just work better than men's clothes and paws. That's about it. Um, Lucas Lewis, Lewis, an excellent tester. Before they go to the final line and get made with the cabinet, he checks every, everything on the play field to make sure he's getting switches, correct solenoid actuation, and lighting. Uh, same with this guy, another tester. And another one. Okay, George, you can talk about this. All this, this building right here is all new. It's, 
It houses um, all the people we don't want in engineering under any circumstances, like the president, you know, all those people, you know, management, uh, um, marketing, sales, they're all in offices. Shelly's in there. She's the only nice one, come to think of it. That's not true. Anyway, this, is, this, this guy is uh, John Vescalia. He just joined our company. Uh, he has an interesting uh, history in sales. I think he's going to work out. He's already starting to produce a lot of ideas um, uh, of ways to differentiate our models from pro to premium to LV. Uh, he's got some interesting ideas. This is Shelly. She's always so happy. I can't stand it. <laughs> this is Jim Bell, also a good guy. Um, you know, I mean, these people get hammered sometimes um, uh, trying to sell games. But the truth is, it's like, you know, a game sells if it's good, and it kind of doesn't if it's not. That's it. It's not much they can do. Um, if, it, if it works out, it's terrific. If not, you know, generally, you know, they're not happy. <laughs> Hallway in that same building. And this is a big bunch of boxes of ACDCs ready to go in. Here's the weird thing about the Stern factory. Everything, everything that we make is, you know, all parts and uh, play fields and cabinets all come in through a big, you know, loading dock, I think with four spaces, but one's plugged up with a permanent uh, storage trailer in there. So we actually only have two lanes open, I think. Yeah, two. So everything that comes into the company has to go from there. This is a long way from there. So these guys have to, you know, get these games on hand, truck and bring them to the trailer when the trailers arrive. More ACDCs. These two ladies are kind of in charge of feeding everybody on the line parts. They know what part, they know part numbers by by heart. I don't. I you know I, I bug them part numbers when I need something. Uh, another shot of the factory. We have a big stack of uh, uh, ACDC uh, cabinets ready to uh, make with the uh, sorry back boxes made with the cabinet. Uh, this is Wei and Chang and Wani Rop, and they are, I don't know what they're discussing, maybe lunch. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are, uh, this is Jim Belt and Shelley's old office, so. Steve. It's not working. Your microphone keeps rubbing against something. Okay, all right. Here? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to move. <laughs> 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 anyway, no, it's like, we have like two offices. <laughs> I'll just leave it to try that. Okay. Rub, rub. Anyway, this is uh, former offices of uh, Jim Belt, of Jolly Backer, Shelley. So we've taken those back from all those people that moved out. And so we're expanding engineering. We're expanding the amount of mechanical engineers we have. We're expanding in the software area. And uh, it's really a great thing. It's, uh, it's tough to find people that, what is it, they're good? But, you know, we want them to have some enthusiasm for pinball. Um, if you're a mechanical engineer, if you're a software programmer and you think you have the magic and incredible stamina, okay, talk to us. Steve.Ritchie at sternpinball.com. I'm serious. Uh, this is going to be my new office. It's kind of like, it's got three doors in it that don't really go anywhere. You know, one you can get in, but these two on the right side, you can't see one of them. I'm going to put fake doorknobs on there and go, heaven and hell, heaven and hell, that's a And this back door, you slide it open, and there's like a big bookcase right there, so you're not going anywhere. One way in, one way out, that's it, right through where I'm shooting the shot. And these guys are uh, all surprised by my camera. They, in fact, they don't want their pictures taken off. But this is Raina. She's a new um, harness lady. She's very good, too. Excellent with AutoCAD. This is Dave Cadeau, who was a former operator. And uh, he's a technician now in the lab. And, and uh, a very handy, good thing. Um, Tom Copera, who worked at Williams for a long time, is also a consultant. So he's doing some of my devices for the next game which shall remain unnamed. Star Trek. <coughs> Star Trek 7. It's Star Trek 7. <laughs> I think uh, this is Gary Stern's old office, and it's, it, George is going to be in there. Good luck. It's got windows on 
two sides. I don't like to, how do you pick your nose in a place like that? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I don't do that. Okay, this guy, this guy's on our team too. And uh, I'm really glad to have him back and, and be working with him. He's, uh, he's a great artist, it's great for us. A great artist and also, so much more than that. I'm sitting right here all day while he's over there in my office because our offices aren't finished. I don't know if you can tell, but this is like all padded, just like this right here, this texture. So you can sort of bounce off the walls if you want without getting hurt. And, um, hey Steve? Yeah. When did he come back? Can you relay that? When, when, when did uh, Greg come back? He came back in September, I think. September, early September. Anyway, he's on a project, and he's great, you know, he helped us script, uh, he's good with scripting, humor, uh, artwork, another play field critic. He plays pinball like a madman every day. Some of these people, like some of our mechanical engineers, don't care for pinball. They work on them, they develop the devices, but they don't go running and play a few games every day because they love it, they just don't. And we can't make them, and they're, they're actually good, you know, they're good at what they do, but. I always like people that are interested in making pinball, you know, and on board. The mechanical engineer I have now is like, uh, man, every Wednesday he buys a stack this big of comic books, okay? He totally knows the story of what I'm working on next. And, uh, well, we all do. Anyway, I'm really glad to have him. This next picture, I'm gonna reveal a piece of my new game right now. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but here it is. Oops, that's not it. Okay. <laughs> this is a motorcycle riding picture. That was when I was racing. Uh, I started racing when I was 50, and I, it's like until 2006, uh, or seven, I guess. Uh, I loved it. It was a great time. This is the piece of my game that I'm revealing. It's the back of the back panel. Hope you enjoy it. It's gonna have a back panel on it. Look at that. Anyway, that's the end of my slideshow. <laughs> It's really fun to go to work at Stern every day right now. Um, uh, it's, uh, one of the things that's great is, you know, having George, uh, he, you know, he, he can be in charge of engineering. That's, it's, it's great for Stern. We're, we're moving ahead and doing a lot of good common sense things. Before that, the guy that was in that job was more like sales oriented and the president of the company. Yeah. <laughs> We've had our differences, in fact, some screaming, drag out fights, and people all around us get scared and leave the room. But, uh, you know, Gary's a, a pinball man again. He has, um, you know, a tremendous history. He remembers everything that we went through. He knows all the things not to do. Um, and he's staying out of engineering, and I love that. Um, what else can I say? I can say that the next game is the most ambitious game I've ever made. I've been working on it for a long time. There's a lot to it, and it's just a, uh, you know, it's a lot of work, it's making me tired. I'm not going to any more shows this year. This is it right here, and uh, until, I'm, until I'm done with this game, and it's gonna take a long time, and beyond that, I always stay with the game as it goes into production for the first month or six weeks to make sure that we, we can make them and, and do it right. Um, I, uh, I look very much forward to what we have planned. We have uh, some interesting, uh, very interesting twists on things and I hope, you know, uh, that we get all these uh, things done. There's a lot of new things that are going on in the game also for the first time at Stern. New, how can I say it? I would say, um, uh, infrastructure stuff and uh, where we're improving some the ways we do other things and they'll definitely affect how you feel about the game too um, I'm probably going to use the new system and this is a you know it's a wonderful thing it's, I'm not going to go into it any more than George did I'll just say well, we, we are likely to be the first game on it but it's not totally known but if I'm not on it I'm kind of in trouble too because I need its abilities and I think that's the best way also to move ahead in the development of the game. Um, what else can I say? I, uh, I'm just happy to be here back in Texas. They have, the best people in pinball are here. That's what I have. Yeah. 
Now, once in a while, you read about, you know, some guy who tries to, you know, who sells a game, you know, with different pictures than the way the game really is. His name always surfaces on the internet, and so it kind of weeds out the bad guys because everybody knows who the bad guys are, and they generally don't show up, which is cool, and there aren't very many. Anyway, that wraps it up for me. I'm grateful um, that you uh, that you're here and that you're pinball fans. Thank you very much. Come on up. Okay. What kind of depth is a fence post, okay? I don't hear very well. So um, Gary's going to relay questions. You can ask anything you want. Tell me how you the show. Um, we, we would all agree that the quality and depth of Stern games now is, is significantly better than they were a few years ago. Is that a result of you and George and Lyman coming back, or was that driven by the outside firm that bought the, the interest in Stern? Uh, some of each, okay? Um, Dave Peterson is a, uh, a very charismatic guy who has his, he doesn't know much about pinball, but he knows how to build a business and uh, in, in modern terms. And I think he helped Gary along uh, by making a lot of the correct decisions that we really needed to make. And uh, what I like is he's a regular guy. Anytime you want, you can walk in and talk to him. You can get his whole take on how things go, and he gets mine, you know. And, uh, and everyone else is that chooses to speak to him. Um, it's also the return of George and, you know, and Wyman, and, you know, we're, we are, we are, you know, we love pinball. And we want, you know, I want to be king, okay, so that's it. I'm not going to make a bad game. I'm going to do everything I can to make the best game I can and make you happy. Yes. Will you make another wide body? Will you make another wide body? <laughs> Never happen. Okay, uh, what I'm going to say right now Why is like, not? well, what I'm going to say is that they are very difficult to make playable. It takes a long time. On, like I'm thinking back to Star Trek The Next Generation. Yes. And it took three <laughs> three whitewoods to make it all work right and keep the flow going so it's back to the flipper. It's a lot of area to cause. It, the ball takes what I call excursions. I have a tough time with that. I want to get it back to you so you can keep going. Also, I like to supply fire to the battle. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. Can you tell us anything about the new ACDC code with the new radio modes that I've read about? The ACDC code right. and the new radio. I want you to go outside out there and light yourself on fire right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess it's kind of leaked out, so it's like, yeah, and it's awesome. Okay. I, there, it'll be out soon. I, there might be one more update after that. You know, Lyman does it when he can. He's do, he does it only at home now because, we, I mean, he's cranking on a different game and, uh, um, you know, we have some time to talk, but he's, uh, he, he's, got, he's got at least one more for sure, maybe two updates coming. Okay, thank you, Mr. Trump. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got an idea for a game. She, she has an idea for a game. Oh, for God's sake. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> if I can. Uh, what was that? Titanic. 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 Wow. It'll yeah, sink. I think the best way to sink is a game possible. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty negative. I'm just kidding. I, I, I don't know. It's a little bit old. You know, that's, that's what I would say about it first. A little bit old. I guess ACDC is too, but, you know, I went around and polled a lot of kids, you know, 10 years old, even 8 years old. And they all had ACDC songs on their iPods. And they do. You guys that have kids, you know I'm right because it rocks. And they were right. right. Have you been surprised by the success of ACDC? Um, yes and no. I mean, you know, we, we made the game thinking this is going to be great. You know, maybe everybody tells them that themselves that, you know, as they make a Titanic pitball machine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
just kidding. Anyway. No, I mean, you might tell yourself that, and it could, you know, because that, you know, it's like a, you know, internal pep talk, right? It could be. For a lot of people, they tell themselves, this is great, okay? And it might not be. But we were telling ourselves, this is going to be great. Actually, we were scared as hell a lot of the time because when you start running pinball rolls alongside music playing all the time, I mean, everybody in the pinball business before this had the habit of going, oh, there's Heartbreak Hotel, so no matter where you are, all right, so it's my baby, let me just interrupt it and steps on it. I didn't like that. Lionel and I are both sick of that, so we just stuck with our guns and said, we're going to make the game that plays continuous music and build the game around it. And, and he really made the magic, not me. He was scarier than me, too. Uh, which, which is your favorite? Wait, a scare or a word? Scare? Scare or No, which is uh, which is your favorite pinball machine that you've designed, and then which is your favorite pinball machine that someone else has created? Uh, uh, two questions. Your the favorite game that you the game that you've designed, and your favorite from other designers. Oh wow. Okay. It'll take a while. My favorites, I don't know, my favorite my, my, my favorite game right now, I do like playing ACDC because, it's, I don't know, it's fun, I, I can tap, and I, I know how to play it, the rules are fresh in my mind. So maybe that's my favorite game right now that, that I did. And uh, as far as uh, other designers, uh, Greg Kamek is Captain Fantastic, definitely influenced me. Um, my brother is Indiana Jones, no question. Um, uh, from Barry Osler Comet, Pat Lawler, uh, Funhouse probably, or maybe Adam's Family, it's a good tie. Adam's Family's great because, boy, there's a lot to it. It's fun and it's an insanely good game. From Dennis Nordman, definitely Whitewater. Um, from uh, hmm? John Trudeau, wow, John Trudeau is uh, Hollywood Heat. I don't know, it's kind of an obscure game, but it was fun, it was a good game. And um, who else can you think of? Jim Patla. Jim Patla, Mata Hari, no question. Um, I think that's about all I can think of or remember. Uh, well, Steve Kordak, Space Mission. May he rest in peace. Yeah, do you like the Generations game? I, I, I love playing that one. Something about the Generations, Debbie. Star Trek Generations. The next generation. What about it? What about it? I love playing now on the Star Trek net over here. Well, thank you very much. It was a fun game to make. Um, great team. Uh, wow, good music, good everything. We had a good time making it. It was, uh, it was a tough thing to do. Like I said, three Whitewoods on that game. But to make the, I don't know, to make it play right and get the ball back to the flipper. Yeah, just a two-part question. Uh, can you say how many ACDC machines you've made so far? And then also, you mentioned about the uh, Pro and the Premium and the LE. Is that going to be the model moving forward for all Stern games? Right, so what are the production numbers for ACDC? Projection numbers? No, production. Oh, production how numbers. How many of these? Well, we're not really permitted to tell you that. You know, it's like uh, it's, they don't want anybody to know. It's a privately held company, so they don't they don't want to talk about it. But I'll, I'll just say that we we've, we've made more of them than anything else in the last seven years, and I expect that. Um, what was the second part? In the future, will we see a pro, a premium, and an LA new game? I'm not sure you'll see it on every model, but you'll you'll definitely see it on some models. No question, that will happen again. Uh, I personally love the idea. I love the idea because, of, you know, an LE is pretty much eye candy, although it can be very spectacular and it's going to be... Uh, what I want to do is I want to tempt every penny out of your, out of your wallet that I can get. <laughs> hey, I'm just being honest. That's it. That's my job, okay? I want every penny you got, so begin to love the LEs now. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. <laughs> Okay. Um, as talented as you and George and Lyman are, the reality is that you can't go on forever. What is Stern doing to train the next <coughs> wave of pinball designers so that 20 years from now there are still games to be enjoyed? You know, we are, we're looking for a couple, George and I actually are looking for apprentices. We haven't made it public, but uh, we'd like to, um, you know, find some people that have the aptitude. The thing is, it's weird. It's like, 
Okay, in order to make pinball machines as I know it, you have to, you know, I grew up like kind of watching all these people. I guess that would be the same for them, but there's a tremendous amount of history. Every time I tried to do something like, you know, I mean, I worked at Atari as an idiot and I didn't know anything. So it's like they, they told me that uh, it's okay to put the PC boards underneath the play field. It isn't. <laughs> okay, that's, that's an arcade fire. That's what that is. And it happened. It did happen. There's lots of things. You know, new guys come in sometimes with, who are, let's say, arrogant, and they go, oh, I can save you $500,000 a year simply by reducing the diameter of the two shafts that pull down on the jet ring. Now, you're not touching them because if we make that weaker, they're going to break. And they very, very rarely break. And I'm telling you, there's 100,000 little pieces of data that the pinball division at Williams, at Stern, at Bally, at Gottlieb picked up. And they know these things. And some of it is like, it's just pinball war. And so it's hard to get that. You know, I, I guess we could teach it to them. But only if they pay me a lot more money. <laughs> I'm just going to give the magic away. <laughs> Anyway, no, we are looking for apprentices. It's a good question. I myself expect to live forever. <laughs> I know I won't, but I, you know, it's like pinball. And one thing that bugs me is I'm getting older, but I'm still 24, 25 up here. Don't you see that? What? Yeah. I look in the mirror and I see that other guy, you know, and it's like somebody I don't even know hardly, but yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's just there. And, George is one of those people. Borg is one of those people. Um, Pat Lawler is one of those people. You know, we just never really grow up, and we're always interested in anything new. People talk about new pinball technology, and it's like, it'd be great. I mean, we have electronics to handle a lot of different things. It's wonderful, that part is. And we got some good stuff coming, no doubt. But, you know, it still takes electricity and coils and magnets and motors to move the ball around no matter what we do. Unless you, sir, come up with some new magic system like that, that blue ball of fire that was in the <coughs> movie, remember that? Yeah, we need that, we need that energy. <coughs> okay, a couple more questions? Can I ask you something? Right here. Down your uh, website, the Steve Reed production. Yeah. You run it all yourself, or you have somebody working behind the scenes? I didn't, yeah. Who runs your website? We do, Diana, my wife and I. I get, get to it when I can. It's not like I'm swamped with stuff, you know. We get a few orders a month, and it's uh, and we do it. I read everything that anybody sends in, and so does Diana. And uh, we're pretty resentful about it. No, we're not. We're, we're very happy. What's the website called? It's called SteveRitchyPinball.com. I have a bunch of stuff there. Okay, there's a question over there. Okay. Now, do you know, uh, of course, Dave Christensen or Mr. Freebie? Uh, Dave Christensen, what was the last machine he made? The, the last machine from Dave Christensen. What would that have been? Wow, what's that one with the uh, As a three real negative guy. nuclear scene? What's the name? Oh. I said that was the Mr. 3B guy. Right, belts, buckles, and boots. Right. Uh -huh. and we're here to talk about Steve Richards. <laughs> I figured Steve would do that. <laughs> Actually, I know him, man. Yeah, I mean, basically, he has a knife collection. <laughs> no, he's all right. He's, uh, he does art for slot machines. Does anybody know the name of the game that had the big nuclear explosion on the back? A guy and a lady, you know, they were flying off oh, away from the planet Earth. Oh, yeah. okay. It might have been uh, Doomsday? I don't know. Yeah, okay, whatever. Anyway, I don't think, it, uh, they didn't use that glass in production, but they, they actually tested the game at Mother's Pinball for a while. That's the last I've, I've, I've seen them. Actually, I really think of him as a respected pinball artist. I, I love the things that he did. Matahari is a piece of work. I mean, it's just awesome. So, as, you know, I, I didn't really like Dolly, but to look at the, the illustrations are incredible, okay? He just has made some beautiful games, and uh, I wanted always to make one with him, but it's not going to happen. And how old is he now? Uh, let's see. 93. No, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. He's around my age, maybe a little older. A couple of years old and living in Milwaukee right now. I'm sorry? He's living in Milwaukee. Is he? Oh, Gary knows more about him. Ask Gary the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you uh, off the record stuff. Like uh, 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 okay. Uh, someone down there had a question. Yeah. Yes, uh, are you still in touch with Python, Angelo? And if so, uh, what's he doing these days? 
the last time I saw Python was at Pinball Expo. Um, and uh, I think he, I, I really didn't speak to him. Not because I didn't want to, but because he was sort of gone before I, I could even walk over and say hi. Gone, gone, just disappeared. He's, uh, he's still working on Pinball stuff. Uh, my, uh, there's reasons to think you might see something from him soon. Really? Uh, are you going to be, uh, on the next game you do, are you going to put your own voice on again? It'll probably be in a couple spots. I, you know, like, it's, it's not, uh, I, I'm hoping that it's, it's focused to other places. I'll put it that way. If we have to say. Not that I, not that I, I don't want to do it, you know. I, uh, I don't mind, I'll, I'll do it. You need to change your character. Enough of this devil guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How long does it take from when you get an idea for a new game until it goes into production? Okay, right now, while I'm working on this game, I'm like, let's say halfway through. I'm really, I've really done more than half of my work that I have to do, but all the work, the sum of all the work, we're at about the halfway point. So, um, I have ideas now for that game. And uh, I, I generally do, I've, I've had a few of the ideas for that game uh, for a while, but I think it might be uh, feasible now, and uh, generally by the time I finish the game, I have enough to get going on the next one, unless I'm surprised by a, you know, a great license like World Poker Tour. Who wouldn't like that? <laughs> <laughs> that was like, you're going to do this, or you're out of here. That's what it was. So how, how long did you spend on, say, ACDC for uh, when you got the title to when the first game came off the production line? Mm, one year. Oh, one year. year. By the way, the people from licensing from ACDC were incredible. They just gave us everything. We never met or saw the band. The band had no input on our game. And, uh, that was, I'm thankful for that, actually. A lot of times, licensors tell us how to make the game, and it's a mistake. We, we don't tell them how to make movies, you know? It's like. Kind of tough when that happens. Would, would, would that be like Kiss or some of those? Would, would those were those tough to get the licensing for? Well, it was Kiss tough to get the licensing for. Of course, that was a Bally game. You know, I have no idea. That's a, that's a Bally game. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah, that's not part of my history at all. I mean, okay. I could find out by talking yeah. to my friends. There, there were stories about Kiss being approached to do um, an update on a, on a you know new Kiss game. Nothing's materialised yet. A couple of questions from the back. I can't hear you. What? Do you expect to see a price point move by the new infrastructure that they're working on? What, what does that mean? Does that mean it's a price to go up? Well, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, when, when games move to the new infrastructure, yeah. does that mean they'll become more expensive? I, I don't see I don't see how that's going to happen. I, I you know I, I I have to say this. Our game largely consists of wood, metal parts, motors, solenoids, wire, okay, lights, um, things like that, and they do nothing but go up. They don't go down ever. You know we the uh, the price of copper is what it is. It goes where it goes. Uh, electronics. They get cheaper. They always do. <clears throat> I wish it was true for wood products and all the things that I just named, but it's not true. It's, you, you don't have to expect a giant price increase um, just because of our our update on electronics. I don't see it. <clears throat> and then, uh, what games, if any, do you have in your home collection, your personal? What games do you have in your own collection? I have nothing right now, absolutely nothing. But I, I do have an ACDC on order, an ACDC premium. <laughs> uh, and I, well, I gotta wait. I have to wait for him to get built. I, I want that game in my basement just because it rocks, it's fun. What I like about ACDC, and it surprised me, okay? <clears throat> my wife came in after she played it and she goes, I feel like a rock star. <laughs> It. And my daughter, same thing. Ladies like the game. I, I love that they love it. I, you know, it's not my target audience because it's a man thing. 
<laughs> no, that's not the reason. The reason why is because most players out on the street are male. I want to appeal to everybody, and I'm hoping that the next game does the same as ACDC, but in my heart of hearts, I don't believe it. When is your next game happen? When is the game? When is the next game? When is your next game due out? It's the 35th day of Kunagonda. <laughs> <laughs> Lock it down on your calendar. It's, it's a festival. It's, I don't have time to tell you everything about it. Okay. Okay. I think with that, uh, one last question over here. Um, after being on the brink of extinction just three years ago, now there are at least six different entities announcing plans to build pinball machines. What is Stern's take on everyone and their brother starting a pinball company? Hi. So with, with all these new pinball companies coming up, people make some games in their garage or whatever, all these yeah. new companies. What's Stern's take on that? Stern's take is, yeah. <laughs> in a lot of cases it's that. My take is, bring it on! <laughs> I, I do like competition. It has been good for us. It has been good to see that there's a competitor making a pinball machine. Um, there's no doubt. It changed the attitude of management. Not so much mine. You know, it's like Wyman, Greg, myself. You, you turn us loose and we're going to do the best we can. If you don't mess with it too much, and, uh, but but as far as uh, you know, competition goes, like it is good for us. I I, I think I want to have the best game out there. What does it take to bring that now? That's what I think. Okay. With that, Steve's going to stick around and sign stuff for you if you want him to. But for the time being, thanks very much, Steve.